I heard pigeons also carry some disease. Oh, what? Yeah. How did it scratch me? <laughs> no, no, I, I heard it on news once that pigeons carry some disease. <laughs> In the pigeon poop especially. There's some down, down here. As if they went to the gallery. Guys. Are you recording? No, no, I can't tell on camera. You know, you don't know that person, he's like, you guys are useless. Who said that? Uncle. He's like, where are you from? It's a very funny video. He's yelling at yeah. us. And then he's like, put the boot on your head. Put it on your head. Who is this? Yeah. And then he's like, you guys are useless. That thing? Yeah. You know the old man. Look at this anchor. Where are you from? 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 I know people all around the world. There was one thing. Like last night, you know that food was really weird. Yeah. Oh my darling, I love you. 
I love you, Nikara. <laughs> okay, you, you, Siga, I love you. Okay, ah, go, If you guys don't know, I got from 50s. Just you guys are saying how Sasuke is sort of Bus to Dogana, the Katmu, the Yantak. Indian grocery, what? Indian grocery? I heard Indian grocery. Indian grocery? 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 Indian Yes, I do not get it. We need to steal the kill. The juice is away. Happy couple, they're sitting together as always. Good stuff. Jasper's hungry. If I only one of them who can be a president, they do not expect one of us as we pass through the train. I hope you enjoy the journey with us today. Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour. Je suis André, votre chef de bord, avec mon collègue David et l'ensemble de l'équipage. Je souhaite la bienvenue aux voyageurs qui viennent de nous rejoindre. Assurez-vous que vos bagages n'encombrent ni les couloirs ni les plateformes d'accès. Je vous invite à consulter la carte de sécurité située à l'extrémité de chaque voiture. Je vous remercie également de bien vouloir utiliser votre téléphone portable avec discrétion. Pour toute information complémentaire, n'hésitez pas à contacter le personnel de bord lors de ces passages dans le train. Mesdames, Messieurs, nous vous souhaitons un agréable voyage à bord de l'Ontario. 
See that? The girls have been room four one nine. Uh huh. Hey, we need beggars. Yeah. Go bombers, go! <laughs> okay, a couple of things then about Paris, which is different to London, just from us moving around in a group type of way. The first thing is the metro is very well organized in Paris. But we need to stay together at all times. And there's one key difference between going on the metro in Paris and the tube in London. Unlike London, where I gave you a ticket, one ticket for the whole day, in Paris I'll be giving you different tickets for different journeys. When you're done with one journey, you can either put the ticket in your scrapbook or put it in the trash. So I have to give you a new ticket each journey we do. It is extremely important that when the ticket goes through the machine, you hold on to your ticket. Okay, okay there's a massive statue over there on the left. Can you see it? Who's that, do you think? Napoleon. It's Napoleon, yeah, that's the Place de Vendôme. Inside there is the Ritz Hotel where our princess died ten years ago. Coming up on the right is the Paris Opera House, built by Charles Garnier in the 1860s. So get your cameras ready because you're about to get a great shot of this Opera House, okay? And just ahead of us is the best cafe in France. It's the Café de la Paix. It's fantastic. So, me and the teachers might go for a coffee in there. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh. The Madeleine, which is, uh, you'll see this with me on the walking tour. It's where the super rich of Paris live. It's where the, many of the fashion houses are and many of the <coughs> film and TV people live and work around here. <coughs> all right. Now, in the beginning of the last century, they wanted to turn it into a train station because after all, it looks like one, doesn't it? This, this is a, it's a classical Greek temple design, though. There's 32 of those columns that go all around. Uh, does anyone know anything about classical architecture? What style are those columns? They're what we call Corinthian columns. All right? The reason why they're Corinthian is they have that floral design on the capital, on the top of the column. Okay. So this is the, around here, are some of the most expensive shops in Paris. And really, this is right in the center of the city. This is the equivalent to Piccadilly Circus, if you, if you like, in London.
We are now heading towards the Place de la Concorde. There is a very large obelisk ahead of us. Can you see that? Can you see the obelisk? The obelisk comes from Egypt, uh, from the temple of Karnak in Luxor. And it was built by the only female pharaoh, Queen Hatshepsut. And she ruled 3,500 years ago. That is a 450 ton block of, block of stone. It's one block of stone. And it's made in granite. Has anyone been to Egypt? Not yet. It comes from the marble, from the granite quarries at Aswan, which is the south of Egypt on the River Nile. Aswan Dam. So the granite was floated up from Aswan to Luxor, then they carved it. On the left and right, you can see Maxim. This is one of the famous restaurants in Paris. On the right, we've got the Hotel Creon, where George Bush stayed. Over on the left, you have the Tuileries Gardens and the Louvre. Over on the right, you've got the American Embassy. You can see the American flag there. In front, you can see the Eiffel Tower. Right there. And uh, ahead, that classical looking building is the French Parliament. The Golden Domes building is Les Avalies, built by Louis XIV. And over in the distance on the left, you can see the Royal Palace of the Louvre. The road on the right hand side is called the Champs Elysees. So it's the most famous street in France. Nice fountain, eh? This square, La Place de la Concorde, was very important during the time of the French Revolution. Revolution. Has anyone studied the French Revolution at school? Yeah. yeah. What was the date of the storming of the Bastille? July 14th. Look on the right hand side. The Arc de Triomphe, oh. the Champs Elysees. Well, we're coming back here on the, on the walking tour, so don't mind. Okay, the view that you get from the top of that great building is astonishing, as you're going to see tonight. You've got a massive panoramic view over the entire city. One rule that the French drivers adhere to, in that you give way to traffic coming from the right-hand side. That's the only traffic rule that exists here. But it is general bedlam here. As you can see, there aren't really any traffic lights up out there. No. Do drive the same as we have, of course, the guide is. I, I, I don't want to say too much because the guide is going to tell you all this again. But that character dressed up as a Roman emperor is, of course, Napoleon himself. Presumably, looking somewhat taller there than he was in real life. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the Arc de Triomphe has been extensively he, refurbished. He was as big as Jasmine. It's only last year that they took the scaffolding away. Uh, it's been cleaned up, the stone has been cleaned. So you can see it looks very uh, pristine and modern now. This is a central, also be below here is, a, is, is possibly the main metro station of Paris. And we'll be going in and out of it because our hotel is institutions, the banks, the insurance companies, etc. are. So you can see we're actually very close to the centre of Paris. We're in a good position. Um, the, the doors of the Paris metro trains uh, open and close very much faster than they do in London. You don't have as much time to get on and off. You know when the door's about to close by a kind of, almost like an alarm sound. And it gives you a two... Yeah. They also have some fantastic stadiums here. I 
ideally you need about a month here and a good three or four months to look around France. Okay, what do you think the number one country in the world for tourism is? The number one country in the world for tourism is France. The population of France is about 60 million people and they receive an amazing 68 million tourists every year. Wow. One of the reasons for this probably is they've got all around 12 and Paris has its own tourist infrastructure completely. Can anyone guess what the second country in the world for tourism is? Quite a bit of time around this square, so we're going to take lots of photos. The weather's great, we're in a good situation, we've got time as well. Alright, first off, that's the Hotel Crillon. Alright, that's the best hotel in France. This, this huge building there. And next door is the American Embassy. Uh, it was, I think President Bush was here two years ago, and they sealed off this entire area here to prevent people from protesting against it. <laughs> this square here is called the Place de la Concorde and during a time in the French Revolution um, it was used as the guillotine square. <laughs> so in the middle of this square here is where the guillotine was and who can tell me which year King Louis XVI was beheaded? Seventeen ninety one? Okay, so this is this is where everybody was gonna see. Today the square is used for big uh, French celebrations. For example, what is the national day in France? What's the day? Correct. 14th of July. Which year? 1791. Correct. 20, 20 points. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move into the centre of the square. So you can see this massive vista that I told you about from the Louvre all the way down to where we are at Defense, okay? So let's try and get... This is a bit crazy, so... Uh, we're going to go across this middle section. So what he says, then it's in the camera. You can see this massive view. Starting where we are, down at La Defense. Can you see the arch through the Arc de Triomphe? Yeah? and all the way to the end at the Louvre Palace. So shall I show you what it looks like on the map? Who's going to help me hold this massive Let's put it up against here. Can we hold this side? Open it all the way up. Right, there's the Louvre. There. And this vista goes all the way through here, which is where we are here in the centre. Okay? All the way up to the Arc de Triomphe there. And then Defense is all the way up here. Wow. That's so far. That's the view you're looking at now. So this street in front of you is called the Champs Elysees, right? French history. 
gonna be. So let's do some tests then. In French history, name me on three occasions when this drink becomes. Let's have one example first. Because when the Champs Elysees represent French people, so if there's a big national celebration, everyone gets on. Everybody gets onto this street and they close the traffic down. They win the World Cup. That's the first one. In 1998, when France won the World Cup, all the traffic was closed. And behind us are the Tuileries Gardens, massive formal gardens that lead up to the Louvre Palace. Nowadays it's amazing. So now we're going to try something even more difficult. We're going to try and get up to the bridge so you can see the river. Oh, finally, can look at the market. Gir gir jam ka gir nindo. Hey, tel pipi, tel pa. I know, leave them in there. Oi! Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. It's this dog poo. <laughs> it's dog poo. <laughs> Tell <laughs> Paul. Yeah. Watch it, guys. 
plaisir grâce à ton ça. Okay, to me, you got a cook. Should ruin the picture. T turn the flash off. Because the other this window, you're gonna glare it back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would like to have a family picture taken. Call mom and the students. Thank you.